Hi, everyone. Thank you for viewing our poster today. My name is Max Sharma. And I'm well accordingly. And we are here to present our poster in emerging immunotherapy, specifically oncolytic viruses. So we both had an interest in immunotherapy um, based off of our previous immunology classes, specifically focusing on the cross-section between oncology and immunology, which is why we chose this topic. And we wanted to explore the different new therapies arising in immunotherapy, which is how we arrived to uh, researching oncolytic viruses. So we will be walking you through our poster. Um, so, you know, right now we have a lot of traditional chemotherapies that kill cancer cells. And while immunotherapy harnesses the host's immune system to attack and eliminate cancer cells, um, we are always looking for different evolving therapies because there are pros and cons to having traditional chemotherapies. Um, however, we want to minimize the cons as much as possible. So there has been a new um, research field of oncolytic viruses, which are genetically modified viruses that infect and replicate within cancer cells, avoiding healthy cells. So this is good, especially because in traditional chemotherapy and radi uh, radiations, it is hard to avoid healthy cells, um, and they do end up getting impacted. So with this oncolytic virus therapy, you are able to better avoid healthy cells, which is why this could be a promising therapy for the future. Um, so it works through a direct anti-tumor cell lysis and initiation of DNA and adaptive functions of the immune system. So over here we have um, just a couple boxes of how the OVs, which I'm referring to as oncolytic viruses, work. Um, they work through tumor-specific um, promoters, viral gene uh, knockouts, and capsid modification. And they work by equipping viruses with immune activating agents. Um, and those are just a couple listed, listed below. Um, so now for overview, uh, we have key components when you're manufacturing your oncolytic virus that you need to have. Um, so these include having a DNA or RNA uh, backbone, and RNA typically kills tumor cells a little faster, so it is preferred. Um, you also have to take into account the size of the, um, the virus, so that could range from a, sm a smaller virus, which is able to diffuse a little bit more readily through tumors. Um, and then you could also have a larger virus, which is able to insert uh, into therapeutic genes. So depending on what you're looking for, um, size can kind of guide you accordingly. Um, so another parameter that we look at when we're creating our oncolytic viruses is capsid modification. And this helps with the binding of the virus to the target cell receptor entry. Um, we also look at chemical modification, which can be um, utilized through things like polyethylene glycol uh, or thiol based coupling of transferrin um, as well as methacrylamide. We also look into pH considerations um, just because the polymer complexes that are constructed are for lower pHs at the tumor site so that they can really target the tumor site versus our other healthier cells. Um, and we also look at delivery which can be done intratumorally or systemically. All right, so alternative approaches to manufacturing these OVs. Um, you can develop a carrier system, and these are through tumor cell-derived microparticles carrying OV, allowing for avoidance of antiviral effect of host antibodies. An example of this is a myeloid-derived suppressor cell, MDSCs, which promote tumor regression, delivery of OVs to tumor sites while mitigating neoplastic lesions. And they are a heterogeneous population of cells that expand during cancer, inflammation, and infection, and have a remarkable ability to suppress T-cell responses. You can also partake in nanoparticle coating which allows for longer OV survival and delayed systemic clearance. Currently, there is one FDA-approved oncolytic virus on the market. It is called Telemagine Leherparepvec, or TVEC. The 
The brand name is Enlogic and it was approved in 2015. It is a modified version of HSV-1 indicated for unresectable cutaneous, subcutaneous, and nodal lesions in patients with melanoma recurrent after initial surgery. It is administered directly into the melanoma lesion. TVEC has a dual mechanism of action, an oncolytic effect whereby it directly infects and kills local tumor cells at the injection site as well as an immunotherapy effect through induction of local and systemic immune responses by GM-CSF. Contraindications include immunocompromising conditions and pregnancy. TVEC exhibits a higher durable response rate during clinical trials versus intralesional GM-SCF alone. There is currently research undergoing on combining TVEC with monoclonal antibody therapy for potential increased oncolytic efficacy. After the first dose is administered, the second dose will be administered three weeks later. Some patients are cured after the second dose, but some will require subsequent doses every two weeks until the tumor is gone. The most common adverse events for TVEC are fatigue, nausea, flu-like symptoms, and injection site reaction. If you turn your attention to the top right corner of the poster, you'll see a comparison chart between oncolytic viruses, monoclonal antibodies, and traditional chemotherapy. Out of the three, oncolytic viruses have the least applicability with only one indication, while both monoclonal antibodies and traditional chemotherapy can be used in many types of cancer. Oncolytic viruses need to be administered in a healthcare facility by a trained professional as they are only administered intralesionally. Both monoclonal antibodies and traditional chemotherapy can be taken at home or more commonly in a facility if it's um, a drug that might have infusion reactions or requires monitoring or is IV only. Out of the three, uh, monoclonal antibodies are actually the most expensive. The median annual price of monoclonal antibody therapy is $142,833 before insurance, while oncolytic virus therapy is only $65,000 before insurance. The cost of traditional chemotherapy has a high variability, with newer therapies being more expensive. Out of the three, oncolytic viruses have the least severe adverse events and are generally well tolerated. Monoclonal antibodies have less severe adverse effects than traditional chemotherapy, which is often debilitating to the patients. We originally created this poster for a CE finale that was about preparing for disasters. This is why we included the bottom right portion of the poster, which is entitled OVs and Preparedness for Disasters. Some disasters that may affect cancer care include earthquakes, tsunamis, and a pandemic. Some benefits of an oncolytic virus in a disaster over other types of cancer care include a spaced out dosing, so you're not going in all the time, and less severe adverse events. Adverse events may be exacerbated during times of stress or disaster. Some limitations of an oncolytic virus in a disaster situation include that you have to go into a facility to receive the treatment. You cannot administer an oncolytic virus yourself or at home. You need a healthcare professional. Also, there are some supply concerns when a disaster strikes, so you might not be able to even get the oncolytic virus. Oncolytic virus patients and providers can be ready for disaster by knowing when their last dose was received, and having extra doses on hand in case of a disaster situation where you're not able to get any new doses. This will conclude our poster presentation. Thank you for listening.